I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of showing interest in the things of God. This is part one. Why it is important to show interest in the things of God. See, many people go through life without showing uh, any interest in the things that will affect them. Not just in, in the now, but throughout all of eternity. And they don't really know the importance of paying attention or investigating the things of God that will give them eternal life. So I'm going to give to you the definition of uh, what it means to pay interest uh, or take interest or show interest in something. The dictionary defines showing interest in something as the feeling of wanting to give your attention to something or of wanting to get involved with something or to discover more about something. So, in other words, don't go through life just going every day, it's me and, uh, against the world. Show interest. Show interest in things that matter in life, especially the things of God. As you're going to notice in this sermon, God notices us when we show interest in the things that concern Him or the things about Him. A good example would be number one, Moses by the burning bush. Moses was uh, a, a sheep herder and uh, taking the sheep to the to the mountainside for them to graze, he comes upon this burning bush and you're going to see what God does when Moses showed interest. He says in uh, Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 to 4, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, this is Moses now, he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now, at this point, Moses could have said to himself, what is my, uh, my concern with the bush burning? Bush have been known to burn before. Or, I'm just concerned about this sheep that I'm, uh, I've been giving uh, charge over. But the Bible says in verse 3, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And the Bible says, again in verse 4, And when the Lord saw, listen to this, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, meaning that he showed interest, God called him out of the midst of the, uh, the, the bush of uh, fire. God called on, out unto him of the, uh, of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. Now, why didn't God just talk to him as soon as the bush was burning? But God waited to see what would be Moses' reaction. Will he pay attention? Will he take interest? If he had showed no interest, God would leave him alone. God doesn't impose himself on anybody. So he, he, uh, he saw and waited to see what was going to be Moses' reaction. And when Moses showed interest, God also uh, spoke to him. Again, another person who showed interest was the woman. When you read in Mark chapter 5, verses uh, 25 to 28, there's a woman who suffered uh, the issue of blood for 12 years. And you're going to see this woman, she's going to hear about the Lord Jesus. And she's going to show interest in what she hears about this man. So let's read it. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 28, it reads, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had uh, suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was not any better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, again, she heard the news 
Some people heard and went about their business. This woman heard and she made a choice to go and get involved. So when she had heard about Jesus came in, the, uh, in and pressed behind him. So she didn't just see her and walked away. She came in for a purpose. She goes like, from based on what I've heard, I know that this guy can do something for me. So she pressed him behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. You know, this is how God operates. And if you read the rest of the story, Jesus was moving when this woman touched him. He actually had to stop and say, who touched me? Who touched me? And then people go like, oh, a lot of people pressing against you. You're going to ask us who touched you? He said, but there was a special touch. And to be honest with you, there are times in my walk with the Lord that I will hear him from heaven based on what I have said or done or prayed. And he will go like, who touched me? And I go like, Lord, it's your daughter. It's me. I touched you. You know? And in my case, when it came to showing interest in the things of God, I was uh, about nine years old. And there are many stars in the sky. And there was this particular uh, star. And it was just twinkling. And as I began to look at it, I noticed that this star shined differently from the other stars. So I was interested in it. And I was, as I, I moved closer to look at this star very well, then I noticed also that when I moved towards the star, the star has also actually moved. So the, the closer I got to the star, the, the, the more the star moved to the point that I was running after this star. I didn't know anything about Christianity yet. I was living in a Muslim town. Ran after this star, until I was in Africa, in Nigeria, in this uh, uh, experience. And we landed in a place called the Mount of Olives, which today I know is in Jerusalem. But I began to notice that this star was just different from all the other stars, because not only did it twinkle differently, it began to get bigger as it was coming down and began to take on the silhouette of a man or a human being, until he became a man, a full-grown man, with nothing but a leon cloth around his waist, no shoes, and he stood on the top of uh, the Mount of Olives. And I watched, I watched at the Mount of Olives split in two. And he was at the bottom in the valley with coals of fire. And he was freely walking on top of these coals of fire, and his feet were not getting burnt. And I didn't know what the marks on his uh, feet were or on his hands. You know, so I had that encounter with him. He didn't tell me what his name was. He didn't tell me who he was because I was blank. I, I, I didn't know anything about Christianity. But what he did tell me was to go get baptized. He said, go, go get yourself baptized and I'm going to show you things. Well, years went by and I forgot. When I later got born again, he came in. As soon as I got spirit filled, here he was. The first thing he said to me, I told you years ago when we met to go get yourself baptized and I was going to show you things. He said, you forgot, but I did not forget. So this is the God that responds when he sees that we show interest in things that concern him. When you don't go investigate the things of God, then you're going to miss out, as we're going to see, about the Pharisees and uh, their lack of interest in the identity of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the Pharisees, the lawyers, and the Sadducees showed absolutely no interest concerning the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were very dismissive of him. Let's take a look at John 7. John chapter 7, verse, uh, verses 45 to 52, it reads, then came, then came the officers, these are the officers that they sent to go arrest Jesus. 
Then came the officers to the chief priest and the Pharisees, and they said, the Pharisees said unto them, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, Never a man speak like this man. Now, when you send somebody on a mission and they come back and tell you something is seriously different about this guy, a normal person will go like, Who is this guy? Let me try and find out. But notice the reaction of the Pharisees. Then answer them, the Pharisees, are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But these people who know not the law are cursed. You see, they just put a curse on God's people. They said they are cursed. Nicodemus said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, don't our law judge any man before it hears him? And know it, what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Are thou also a Galilean? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. So, very dismissive. They were not interested in knowing who he was. As soon as they heard that he was called Jesus of Nazareth, they made up their mind. Nothing good can come out of Galilee, Galilee of the Gentiles, period. Well, he could have, if they had showed interest, they would, could have noticed that he was, or found out that he was born in Bethlehem, according to the scriptures. But they were not interested. And one of the saddest things that you read in scripture is this next one I'm, that I'm going to read to you. Very sad. He said, and every man went unto his own house. They all dispersed and went to their houses without paying attention or showing interest in trying to find out the identity of the Lord Jesus. Even when the Lord Jesus told them, he said, search the scriptures. For these scriptures point to me, as we see in John chapter 5 verse 39. You think they will? Listen to this. Jesus said unto them, search the scriptures, for in them ye think that ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come unto me that ye might have life. See, if somebody says something like this to you, don't you really, if you don't have any ulterior motive or, or something different, you will at least go like, but who is this man? Let me go find out. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, the Jews were very good at keeping genealogies. If they were interested, they could have found out who Jesus was. They could have found out everything about him. But no. You know, even when he told them, he said, Moses wrote about me. Listen to this in uh, John chapter 5 again, verses uh, 25 to 28. How can you believe which you receive honor one from another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom he trusts. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. He wrote of me, he says. But if ye will not believe his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So you see again and again the Lord is making statements that a person in his rational mind or her rational mind will do their homework or will go and investigate who this, this person is. And now you're going to find out even John the Baptist. They all knew about John the Baptist. John the Baptist testified of the Lord Jesus and they knew it. This is what John said. In John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34, John uh, is recorded that the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, that after me cometh a man which is preferred before me. 
for he was before me. Meaning, this man is greater than I am, and he is higher than, than myself. So then they listen to what he says to them. He said, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing. John tells them the purpose of his ministry. He says to them, my ministry is to point out this man as the, uh, the Lamb of God and as the Son of God. This is the whole purpose of my ministry, to point him out to Israel. You would think that they will take notice of what John is saying and go find out about the man. You know, and then John continues. And John brought records saying, I saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove and it abode in him. And I knew him not. John, you see, John is not going like, I'm not relying on my own uh, observation. This is what happened. He said, but he that sent me to baptize with water, meaning God, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the, old, the, uh, which baptized with the Holy Spirit. And John testifies it, and I saw and I bear record that this is the Son of God. This is the Son of God, without mixing words. And they knew that John said these things. You would think that would change their mind. No. And then the Lord Jesus reminded them of this same testimony by John. In uh, John chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse, uh, verses 33 to 38. He says, Jesus is not talking to them. He said, ye, you Pharisees, lawyers, and Sadducees, you sent unto John. And he bore witness unto the truth, meaning him as the truth, as the Son of God. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works do be a witness of me. And the Father which has sent me. He said, and my Father which hath sent me had borne witness of me. Ye have never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye... Have not his words abiding in you, for whom he has said, him ye believe not. So now, if somebody says all these things to you, and John is over there proclaiming him as the Messiah, saying, God sent me to baptize, my ministry is to point this man out. And what is really interesting is that these people know about the importance of John's ministry, the credibility, in other words, of John's ministry. Yet, they were not moved, you know. So, Jesus, they, were, they did not like, they did not even try to look into his identity. After he told them, they said, you do not know my father, therefore you don't know me. So, he said, had uh, you known my father, you would have known me. Then people would have, if a normal person again would have gone, okay, let's send people to go investigate this guy, but not them. So, what did Jesus say to them? He asked them because he knew that they regarded, I mean, John's father was a priest. They knew John's ministry. It was not an obscure ministry. So he asked them a question. He said, John's ministry, where did it come from? From heaven or from a man? Listen to this in Luke 20, verses uh, 3 to 7. And Jesus answered them and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing. Answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then, uh, why, why then believe ye not him? But if we shall say that of men, all the people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John is a prophet. And they answered and that they could not tell whence John the Baptist ministry was from. In other words, we can't tell you where it's from. We can't tell you whether it's from heaven or of, of man. Which means they have heard John testifying about the Lord Jesus. They were just not willing to accept him 
or to look into his identity. You know? So, and what is really bad about the whole thing is that not only did they not believe, they encouraged a lot of the, uh, the citizens, the people, not to believe Jesus. They actually made it a law that if you believe in Jesus, you are to be cast out of the synagogue or from, you are to be prevented from getting into the temple. So even those that uh, wanted to believe in him, some of them were afraid of the authorities. And you're going to see the, uh, the, the impact of this instigation of the leadership against the Lord Jesus playing out uh, from the people in, uh, in this uh, next John chapter 10 verses uh, 30 to uh, 33 it says Jesus talking and I and my father are one I mean if a man tells you that he's one with God and he's doing miracles legitimate miracles and he's calling himself the son of God would you want, want to go find out who he is especially if you were expecting a messiah to appear the whole nation was expecting him just because he came from galilee they just dismissed him he says that i and my father are one then the jews took up stones again to stone him jesus answered them many good works have i showed you from my father for which one of those works do you stone me what a question I have showed you many works from my father. For which one of these good works are you about to stone me? So the Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou being man, thou being a man, maketh thyself God. Because to say that you are the Son of God means that you are God, come in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. And these things are not so impossible. Because the Bible, the, I mean, the, the, the Torah told them they were going to happen. That a virgin was going to conceive and give birth to a son. His name actually is going to be God with, with us, the Son of God, the everlasting Father. So, if you're expecting these things and somebody actually shows up on, this, on the scene doing things and pointing to the, uh, the scriptures, then you go investigate him, show some interest in who he is in investigating his identity, but not them, you know. They were not interested, and they turned the people that follow them against the Lord Jesus, so that on the day that they trumped up the charges and uh, brought him before Pontius Pilate, they encouraged the people to ask for Barabbas and to crucify Jesus. And when you look at the whole thing, it's like, how sad. How, oh, how really sad. It is for the Jewish leaders to refuse to look into what was before them. You know, to look into the man standing before them, fulfilling everything their own scripture said he was going to do. You know, so, but there's a reason. And what we see part two of this uh, scripture, I mean, of this sermon next week, you will find out why the Jewish uh, leaders were so obstinate or so dismissive of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, but it's really sad that even today we have to make sure that we are not dismissive of who Jesus is. You have to make sure. So if you have heard the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, and that he came into this world, and that he died on the cross for our sins, and God the Father raised him up on the third day, don't dismiss it, please. Because it is what makes a difference. Your reaction to it, and your decision concerning it, will make a difference as to whether you will spend all of eternity with God the Father, or you're going to burn forever in hell. It's the only way, the only truth that there is, and the only source of life. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no life outside of him. So if you have heard this message and you say, okay, I'm going to go look into the identity of the Lord Jesus, or I've looked into the identity of the Lord Jesus, 
and I want to belong to him, it's very easy and very simple to do. All you have to do, because the Bible says, first you have to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then confess it with your mouth. Because first with your heart you believe, you make confession unto salvation with your mouth. So if you believe him, and believe the good news about him, say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come before you. And I ask that you, uh, Lord Jesus, you come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and repent. Because you must repent. Tell him that you are sorry for all your sins. You don't have to recount all your sins. Because your whole life has been in sin. So where are you going to stop? So you just ask him, Father, I have been a sinner. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. And be my Lord. Lord Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Make me one with you and the Father. I need your life. I need your salvation. And if you do this, he will hear you and he will save you. And it makes a difference because once you receive him, you start looking, show interest in the word of God. And start walking and living your life according to the word of God. There is no way that God is not going to save you or take you with him when he comes to take up his church very soon. So if you have heard and done that, God loves you and I love you and God bless you.